April 18th, <clears throat> 2022, <clears throat> I'm in New York, I'm Bayside, um, the, I'm watching CBS this morning, um, earlier they had on the screen light laser pointer, which <clears throat> I heard the humans refer to as tactical lights once before, apparently, um, the... I mean, I call them the, the smarter people, but, like, the people that actually were, looked favorably upon the pilots, um, who were able to leave the ground and make further distances and are in charge of whatever. I know they're looked more favorably upon than someone like myself. Um, <clears throat> they are getting these laser pointers pointed at them. Now, my question is, um, I mean, in, in photon and wavelengths, from what has been presented in language from the humans, in I'm not as educated as <clears throat> some of them, but I'm just reiterating their words. They say there's a xenon photon level, um, which is extremely toxic light. I could only imagine breathing it in would be toxic as well. It would change the chemistry of the air. It would change it if it goes up in large cloud format. It could interact somehow with the sunlight or the UV. And it could um, change how the eye interprets the light. And not just in a laser-focused way of temporary blindness, but in a more concerning way of loss of capacity to function as a human in this internal space under the sky, above the ground. To not be able to oxygenate properly, almost like the theoretic of a, like a fish in a fish tank with the algae growing and the algae taking so much of the oxygen away and the fish not being able to get away but can't breathe. Um, that's, that's where my message comes from. I feel as though I'm the fish and people are creating this toxic tank of algae that's robbing and starving me of not only oxygen but the ability to function properly. So this morning they put up this new nuclear age. They're putting up, They, I mean, they did this in the 1980s. Now they're back to it. They said, they made some key words. They said, they're billions over budget. Now, are those billions over budget? Are those specific payoffs that they had to go out and pay people to gain camaraderie in order to push these projects forward because they're letting off these gigantic gas plumes and I had to listen real carefully because they don't say what's in that gas like what makes fossil fuel gas the the clouds that or the steam towers what makes fossil fuel what's in that chemistry that's different than the one in the nuclear and the radio, they say radioactive. Well, we have a lot of radio waves. It seems that everything is working off of some kind of radio wave, from the Alexa to the TV to the AM, FM radios. And so now if that's mixed with this highly toxic chemical component, it the le if it raises the level of photon light that our eyes pick up, <clears throat> it can interfere, just like with that laser pointer, just walking out without sunglasses or even with sunglasses, it can interfere with the optical ability to hold a brainwave thought and pattern. And then for us, it could be interfered with. And then for us to be able <clears throat> to go out and function because your oxygen level is depleted, because there's less oxygen in the environment, the photon light level is raised because <clears throat> it's, I mean, like, again, I don't know how the words, 
to sound like an educated, smart professional. I really I don't. I'm very rudimentary. I listen for the key op words that the humans are giving as clues in order to try to piece together the health component that I feel I'm suffering at in the New York City area at the moment. Um, but it's at a grander scale. It's it's not just New York City. It's there, these clouds of toxic waste or toxic clouds, they travel. So I don't know where they're being let into the environment that then in like a strut, like I don't, and I don't even know, is it the stratosphere, is it the ionosphere? Again, I've caught here the electric, the lightning doesn't even travel to the ground to have a functioning ground to sky or cloud level. The For some reason, the ions are, and the disbursement of energy is acting in a different way that's also affecting the humans in that at times it feels like there's electricity coursing through the veins, not enough like a lightning strike to cause burns or whatever, but it does cause harm to the physical component of the body. And it's just, where do you report this level of integration? Who's responsible for it? I don't know. But now I'm listening to their artist's work piece of some sort um, to do a parlay overlay because I don't have this level of um, integration into society. Like, again, college was not a pathway. Like, I went to college, but it wasn't like a PhD or a graduate or whatever. It was, I mean, it was like really like an extension of high school, but you had to pay for it. And it never led to a career in anything. There was no mentorship. There's no guidance. There's no anything. Go, go, go. Chris Paul and Charles Barkley have spoken. That's right. That's what I always call him keeping it real. <laughs> yeah. Always. He's a former Phoenix Sun, too, as well. I know. That's true. Yeah, but always keep it real. there that might be a little biased, just a little. <laughs> As we count down to Earth Day this Friday, CBS News is launching our Earth 365 series. It's focusing on issues affecting the health of our planet year-round. The latest UN climate report warns that the world needs to move very quickly away from planet warming fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, stuff a lot of us use. The idea is to switch to cleaner forms of energy like wind and solar power, which are now cheaper and more abundant than ever before. But to ditch fossil fuels rapidly, a lot of experts and even some environmentalists say we also need to consider the nuclear option. Senior national and environmental correspondent... Why? Is, I mean, again, the nuclear family is one thing. Then there's this nuclear option for energy, which I think that the kids that go to graduate school and that speak... Um, are confused uh, as to who to back, what to back, why to back it. But again, lesser oxygen and higher photon level interferes. It's a disruptor. It just is. Correspondent Ben Tracy visited America's first new reactors in more than 30 years and learned that nuclear power could be poised for a comeback. And so this thing, that's the new reactor? That is. That, that's it. That is the newest nuclear reactor in the United States. There's two of them being built here outside Augusta, Georgia. When combined with these other reactors built in the 1980s, this will be the largest nuclear power plant in U.S. history. We're building the future of energy, and we think nuclear power is, is a ma major part of it. Chris Womack runs the Georgia Power Company, which is overseeing the final construction of the first nuclear reactors in the country in more than three decades. It's taken 10 years and cost more than $28 billion. So that is nuclear fuel in there. That is nuclear fuel there. So now you've taken all of this opportunity, all of this money from the sports, from the military, from the industrious revolting revolution that everybody's taking part in, and you took complete control away from those that are already sick and disadvantaged and now are pushing this with your most smart people. I, I really don't get humanity. 
I don't understand why they would waste education on people and engineers that are then going to come out with this level of project that's going to reshape and harm mul like multi-nations of people and cause them biological deformity and defects in performance. Why would you invest that in your future plan? I don't understand it. But yet it's being done. And how does one stop this level of giant boulder from just crushing th over them? I mean, like, where's that voice? What level does that voice get to? He showed us this 47-foot deep sapphire pool loaded with nuclear fuel rods containing uranium that will enter the reactor and power a million homes. Why do we need this? Our customers need energy on a 24-7 basis. Why? Don't sell them energy-needed products. I don't understand why it's just like now all of a sudden a given that everybody gets electric. Needs to be a foundation of our electric grid that's available all the time. Right now, that foundation is fossil fuels, which are rapidly warming the planet, causing devastating and deadly changes to the climate. Coal, oil, and natural gas make up 61% of our energy supply in the U.S. Renewables such as wind and solar are 20%, and the nation's 56 nuclear plant. You know who does this? I've heard. Not that I'm a part of it. Drug dealers. I've heard that they go into an area, they give out free samples, they get people hooked on all sorts of things, and then they make gigantic businesses out of it. I don't see the difference between the nuclear problem and equation and the drug problem between the synthetics, the naturals. It's still getting someone hooked on something because now everybody has a phone, everybody has electric in the house, everybody has a television, everybody has a computer, everybody has a phone, everybody has a need now for power. So now you got them hooked. So now you got to figure out how you're going to supply it. Well, the supply chain is a problem because if it's letting out xenon gas, which is what this particular, um, but you have to listen for the key op words. Because I don't know what the chemistry is. I don't know how to even research that. Because I haven't gotten to that level. Purposely or not. Whether they built me into a false imprisonment lifestyle. It's where I'm at. Your plants make up the rest. Nuclear power creates no planet warming emissions. And when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining, the atoms are still splitting. It's reliable, it's safe, it's affordable, and it's very, very clean. If this... According to whom? This is such a great form of power generation. Why are these the only two reactors being built in the country? Well, you know, we, we got away from it. Because the public turned against it. So if we got away from it, we were headed in the correct direction. And then some... Whatever pulled us right back into the bad. I mean, it's just... In the 1970s, concerns over nuclear waste and security fueled a nuclear power backlash. We have a serious condition to get everybody into safety areas and make sure that they stay there. The 1979 film The China Syndrome stoked fears with a fictional meltdown at a nuclear power plant. Twelve days after it hit theaters... Radioactive xenon gas is still being... Whoa. Oh, look at that. Xenon gas back in 1979. So in 1979, they were honest that it was xenon gas, which is the high photon level um, for the eye spectrum, which goes back to that laser pointer that the FAA was reporting that the pilots are having problems with from the ground. I've been reporting that that's the gas that they use in, or I don't know if it's the exact gas that they use in the lights, but they, the humans say it's a xenon light uh, that they're making, and it's xenon gas, so that's included in the process somehow. That's how they light things up in like a neon category. 
discharged life imitated art in Pennsylvania at the Three Mile Island nuclear facility. No one was killed, but then came 1986. U.S. officials believe the disaster at Chernobyl began on Friday. With the meltdown of Reactor 4 at Chernobyl in U The news, I feel like, again, in 1979 and 1986, they had the real, like, real journalism, real words, real explanation. Now, in this year 2022, it's like the circus news. It's like the entertainment. It's like they hand you radioactive material with a smile, and they're like, just, you're going to die anyway. It's like, what? It's so confusing. At least in 1979, they were serious. You knew that, like, you needed to do something. Here, it's just like, ah, somebody else will take care of it. Again, I don't know if this is like what I call six foot under syndrome, but because um, it's just, it's like you're headed to some form of cancer or some form of death. And it's just, it, it, how do you avoid it? In Ukraine, when it was part of the Soviet Union, became the worst nuclear disaster in history, directly killing 31 people and exposing millions more to the fallout. These accidents made nuclear power itself radioactive. Nuclear power is dead. It died at Three Mile Island. Do that was in the 70s and 80s. Who resurrected it? Dozens of planned nuclear projects were canceled, and the U.S. doubled down on fossil fuels. But now nuclear power is once again making headlines as a way to potentially save the world from climate change. Electricity demand in the United States and really all around the world is only going up, 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 up. Alex Trembath is deputy... Why not scale back the electricity requirement or need? Instead, now these idiots are putting in, like car batteries and needing electric to fuel those. I mean, stop driving. Start building responsible communities where people can go on foot or rail to wherever they need. Why do you have to keep giving them individual transport? It doesn't make sense. Deputy Director of the Breakthrough Institute, a climate think tank. It doesn't make sense at the level for which they're planning or that they've already planned and put into effect that's now causing us this, which could have been prevented, but again, leadership being as horrible as it was and is at the moment, getting worse. Think tank. He says to electrify everything from our vehicles to our homes and businesses, we will need nuclear. There's no grid on the planet that relies overwhelmingly on wind and solar for more than even half of its electricity generation. So it's like they now have these learning institutions where they teach them the disease of consumption. They purposely, you, play, you come up with research and studies and whatever we need. We have increased demand on the electric grid. I need you more, 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 more. Why? Why are they not going into these facilities and saying, we're tasked with scaling back energy consumption, scaling back personal transport, scaling back on toxic gases being let out in the atmosphere, and scaling back on disease-causing activities? Why is that not the main focus of all of these whatever that get to go, that are fortunate enough to go to learning or higher in like learning institutions and actually have careers in the field where they can afford clothing and to take care of themselves. Just curious. So everywhere in the world where nuclear gets shut down, it's replaced largely by fossil fuels. After the 2011 meltdown of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, the Japanese and the Germans shut down most of their nuclear power. Coal and gas filled much of the void. The U.S. is on track to decommission nine nuclear power units in just eight years, including California's Diablo Canyon plant, which generates 10% of the state's electricity, far more than wind power provides. I don't know why we would, we would take this enormous piece of our, of our clean electricity pie and just throw it in the garbage. Trembath argues the impact... 
because if all of these clouds are full of xenon gas, it's like it's like taking the most toxic light bulbs, the xenon light bulbs, or they might not be the most toxic, but toxic light bulbs into your home, smashing them all, and then using whatever is made in like your food processing, in your breathing. I mean, you would be sent to like you You'd either die or you'd have to be go to some kind of hospital in order to detoxify. Where do you detoxify when it's let out in your cloud system? It's carried far, far to other lands, and they can't get away from the breathing in of this, and it changes the photon light so that now your body becomes less aware of its surroundings, less integrated with the system. It's less effective as a, as a machine or part of the machinery because this has put a damper on your ability to function through your natural state interacting with some outside addition. That you, I mean, like, I didn't ask for this. I didn't approve nuclear anything. But yet I'm suffering from the effects of it, no matter where they've put this in. I don't know. And I only know because I was diligent enough to, to sit that this they call this xenon because somebody was professional enough to put a mention from 1979 with those words into a broadcast in 2022 because normally they don't even cover this and I have never and I have not heard them use the word xenon um, in their cloud cover but I've heard it used in light bulbs and those seem to be the new light bulbs that they've gone to which is like that what they call tactical lighting so why are they tactically lighting the day sky rendering the human less effective and you get foggy you get confusion you get dizzy i mean it's it's you walk around you don't know what to do you're sluggish i mean these are all real effects on the human which renders them ineffective it makes it so you're less effective to perform communal tasks of taking care of your society, your family, your neighborhood, and integrating yourself into whatever's needed for the larger scale humanity project. Packs of fossil fuels are killing far more people than nuclear power ever has, and nearly 80 scientists and academics recently signed a letter urging California's governor to keep Diablo Canyon open, warning that closing it is irresponsible and potentially catastrophic. Nuclear power has been getting its shot in the United States for at least five decades. Ralph Kalbanaugh is with the Natural Resources Defense Council. He argues nuclear is too costly and takes too long to build to effectively help fight climate change. And there's also that other issue. Our failure to find a nuclear waste solution, which means that any community that hosts a nuclear power plant has to be prepared to also host its radioactive waste for centuries, if not longer. The nuclear industry is now touting a next generation of smaller, safer, and less expensive plants. Bill Gates is funding a company called TerraPower, which plans to build its first compact nuclear plant in Wyoming. I think people can come around. Chris Womack says he's excited. Come around? I can't even afford a house, food, like anything for my kids. My body's malfunctioning because of all of these clouds of gas that you're letting out. Come around to what? I don't get it. He's excited to show that nuclear power has a future, despite being billions over budget. Nuclear billions over budget. So where did they spend those billions? Who were they paying off in the environmental and scientist realm? Because... Usually you need gigantic something in legalities in order to even put something together like this. So now they're paying each other off. They have to be. And it's billion dollars over budget? Yeah, no shit. Really?
Nuclear power will be a reliable, stable fuel source for many, many years to come. In what could be a new atomic age. For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy in Waynesboro, Georgia. Well, something for everybody to mull over. I think Mr. Womack and Mr. Trimbath made some really interesting points about nuclear, but a lot of people are still holding on to those movies, The China Syndrome. Yeah. Then in the early 80s, it was uh, The Day After. Yeah, I remember that. As a kid, movie. that was yeah, a, that I scared remember every that child of yes. that movie. Yeah, I think there still needs to be a re-education on nuclear energy. Yes. But hearing Ben Tracy being told it's reliable, safe, affordable, and clean, yeah. right? it does help put people at ease. And that point. It does. It falsely puts people at ease um, with the biological effects being so whatever. Um, I didn't see the two movies as a kid. I saw Inner Space. I didn't see whatever this was. Um, it's Star 1978, Star 8378, Nicole Ketteru's It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, Woman 361. And today is April 18th, 2022.